Welcome! This video will guide you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Viking Pump KE through QS4195 heavy duty internal gear pump. This series includes the following Viking Pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority when working on or around any equipment. Follow the correct safety procedures. It is critical to know what liquid the pump is handling and what precautions are necessary to safely handle the liquid. Always read and follow the safety warnings in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. Copies of the latest service manuals can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. Soft-headed hammer, allen wrenches, and spanner wrenches. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. For newer pumps, seal kit and rebuild kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. For older pumps or if the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The pumps covered in this video are KE through QS 4195 series heavy duty pumps with behind the rotor component mechanical seals. The seal kit includes mechanical seal, O-rings, bearings, bearing collars, and associated hardware. The rebuild kit includes a replacement idler and bushing assembly, head and pin assembly, and associated hardware. Take care when opening the kit so as not to cut or damage these repair parts. Keep the pump and work area as clean as possible. Drain the pump of any residual liquid. Turning the shaft will help expel any liquid trapped in the gear teeth. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Remove O-ring from head. Insert a brass bar or piece of hardwood in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Bend up tang of lock washer and remove lock nut and lock washer from shaft. Loosen two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and remove the bearing housing assembly from the casing. Remove the bearing spacer from the shaft. Remove the brass bar or piece of hardwood from the port opening. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft-headed hammer may be needed to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. The rotary member of the seal will come out with the rotor and shaft. Remove the seal seat or stationary part of the seal from the casing. Remove the bearing space collar. If working on sizes KE, KKE, LQE, or LSE sizes, Remove the mechanical seal from the shaft assembly. Remove the inner single row ball bearing from the casing. Remove the set screws from the face of the bearing housing to aid in disassembly. Loosen the two radial set screws in flange of bearing housing. With a spanner wrench, remove the outer end cap. Remove the ball bearing from the bearing housing. Inspect pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the idler pin, idler bushing, idler gear, rotor, and casing. Whenever the mechanical seal is removed from pump, it is advisable to install new. Check parts for nicks, burrs, and excessive wear. Replace any worn components. Make sure both are free of dirt or grit. Coat idler pin with non-detergent SAE 30 weight or compatible oil and place idler and bushing on idler pin in the head. Coat the outer diameter of seal seat with O-ring lubricant. Press seal seat into the seal housing bore. Be sure the unlapped face is in bottom of bore. The seal seat should be completely seated in bore. 
place tapered installation sleeve on the shaft. Coat tapered sleeve an inner diameter of the mechanical seal rotary member with a generous amount of O-ring lubricant. Slide the rotary member with the lapped contact surface facing away from the rotor on shaft and over tapered sleeve until it's just contacting the back of the rotor. Tighten the set screws evenly to 90 inch pounds. Remove installation sleeve. Install the rotor and shaft into the casing, slowly pushing it until the end of the rotor teeth are just below the face of the casing. Take care not to damage the seal seat. Coat the O-ring with O-ring lubricant and place on the head. Install the head and idler assemblies on pump, ensuring proper location of the pin and crescent. The idler pin, which is offset in the pump head, must be positioned toward and equal distance between the port connections to allow proper flow of liquid through the pump. Install the head cap screws and tighten evenly. Coat the inner diameter of the bearings, bearing spacer, and bearing spacer collar with an anti-fretting agent. Install the bearing spacer collar over the shaft into the bore. The Q and QS sizes do not contain a bearing spacer collar. Install bearing into bore. Install the bearing spacer so it is against the bearing. Install the bearing into the bearing housing assembly. Turn the end cap into the bearing housing until it is tight against the bearing. Lock in place with two nylon slugs and set screws in the flange of bearing housing. Install two set screws into the face of bearing housing. Start the bearing housing assembly into the casing. Turn by hand until tight. Install bearing spacer collar, lock washer, and lock nut on shaft. Insert brass bar or piece of hardwood into port between rotor teeth to keep shaft from turning. Tighten lock nut to torque values located in the technical service manual. Remove brass bar or piece of hardwood from port. Bend one tang of lock washer into slot of lock nut. If tang does not line up with slot of lock nut, tighten lock nut until it does. Failure to tighten lock nut or engage lock washer tang could result in early bearing failure and cause damage to the pump. Turn the thrust bearing assembly clockwise until it can no longer be turned by hand. Back off counterclockwise until the rotor shaft can be turned by hand with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the casing. Using measurement from the table in the technical service manual, make a second mark on the casing left of the first mark at the distance indicated. In this example, we require five thousandths of an inch end clearance on a model KKE4195 pump. So the mark is made five eighths of an inch away. Rotate the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise until the bearing housing mark aligns with this new casing mark. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the casing. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Be sure the shaft can rotate freely. If not, back off additional length on outside diameter and check again. Your Viking Pump internal gear pump is fully repaired and ready to put back into service. Follow the suggested maintenance located in the appropriate technical service manual for a long, trouble-free service life. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you.